Hi everybody, it's Tony Visco. I'm your host for Painting for Pleasure. And guess what we're gonna do today? We're gonna do a, a little fawn. Now, I probably don't expect you to draw this all out because this is a, I mean, first of all, it's gonna take a little while to, to understand the, uh, uh, the architecture that you're dealing with here, you know, the, the underlying shapes of the fawn, uh, the skeletal form, the, the muscles and so forth, and that's a drawing implement. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to just give yourself a trace of the outline uh, so that you know where you're going, because it's a painting class right now. It's not a drawing class. Um, at some point in time, we'll probably get into doing a little bit more of the um, skeletal form, structure, shapes, and so forth. Each animal has a specific shape to it. Uh, I am not totally proficient in all of the different animals. I don't want you to think that I am. Uh, I would have to go through the same process that you would have to go through in understanding what happens uh, with the skeletal structure of all of the different animals. But um, I thought it would be fun to paint. And rather than two or three of them, I figured maybe one to start. So let's get started with it. Um, you know, we have we have a, an outline, we have structure. Uh, it basically on a, on the size of a deer or a fawn, usually the uh, the facial structure that is the the head is <laughs> probably equivalent to the ears. I mean, if you take a look at this, you know, the ears are fairly large on this little baby, uh, and so. That's very dominant and is a, is a characteristic shape of, of a deer or a fawn. And they have a long body. Notice how small the head is over here to the long body, extremely long body, and uh, very long legs. And this little guy I rescued uh, a while back, he was, uh, he was caught in, this, in the uh, area down at the Jones River. And we pulled him out, put a blanket on him, and within, I'd say within a half an hour, that's, that little fawn was kicking and everything else. You didn't even want to get near it. So anyway, thought it might be fun to do. And we've got some foliage in the background. So we're going to start off with uh, a little bit of, uh, let's go start off with a little bit of the background stuff first. Uh, and I'm going to get, I'll get my brush. And we're going to end up coming in here and just wetting. Well, let's get the little bit. Let me get the little larger brush so that we can wet the background a little bit more. Okay. So today I'm using a Wattman paper. A um, little bit more forgiving. I can tape it if I want, so that's not going to be an issue. Um, this is the paper that is, uh, it's, I'm using actually right now 90 pound, uh, which is, which is a paper that you really have to get, understand. It's a very thin, it's a very thin paper, very thin watercolor paper, uh, and it will buckle, as you can probably see as I, as I more, as I put water on here. It's going to buckle. Um, what 90 pound is is simply a, a situation where uh, if you take 500 sheets of this paper and put them together, that's going to weigh 90 pounds. If you take 500 sheets of 140 pound paper, it's going to weigh 140 pounds. And if you take 500 sheets of 300 pound paper, that's what it's going to weigh. So that's how you get that. So as I start to look at this, my, my background, I've got all foliage up in this area. I'm not going to paint a lot of foliage here. I don't want you to. I don't want you to get into a situation where we're we're, we're really painting a lot of foliage. That's because you go, uh, <laughs> as I say, you know, it's a little bit too much. So, 
Uh, I, what I'm more interested in is is getting the characteristic shape of this guy painted correctly. And I want to make sure that I'm leaving the uh, the little guy dry while I paint around everything else. All right, so based on that, I think what I'll do is I'm going to just start with this big fat brush over here, and we're going to come in here with some very soft greens. We have some real warm stuff going on. A lot of water. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start out with my new gamboge. But I'm going to make it very wet, very loose, very watery. And we're going to come across here. And the reason I'm doing this is because if I if I miss, like I just did, for instance, and I went into some of this the fawn area, the body of the fawn, um, the fawn is going to be warm anyway. All right, so I'm not sort of too worried about it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a coating. I'm going to leave a lot of this white. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of my cerulean blue. Mix a little bit of cerulean blue and get a little bit more of a greenish cast to this. Adding some cerulean blue is what I did to my new gamboge. Um, and if I if I put it into the yellow area, it's going to be a little bit warmer. Some of this is going to get dark in here. What I'm going to also do is bring in a little bit more darker area, a little cobalt blue in this mixture of my green. Put it into the wet area. Now I'm mixing all of this with my New Gamboge, a little bit more stronger cobalt blue. Into my wet area. I wanted to find this guy a little bit. Now, if I put it into my, I just put it into my wet area. And what I'm going to do actually is lift this up a bit. I'm going to spray it. So let's do this. I want to spray it down. I'm going to get a little bit of a little bit of that in here. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. And again, a little bit of water. And we're going to spray this down. And what I also want to do here is turn it around. And let it go. So what I'm basically doing is just trying to outline my... Outline my fawn. Pick up some of this water. It's going to be a lot of a lot of wet water there. And I want to blend that my 
my fawn, I want to blend them into the background so that everything is sort of working together. But I just needed this outline. And it's an easy way to do that. Just spray it, make it spray it down. Now that's going to end up drying. Um, what I'm going to do is come in and pick out some lights, put some docks in for the flowers, or the greenery, whatever flowers back there. Um, so that should be okay that way, and we're just going to have to just absolutely let that set for a bit until it dries off. Um, so the idea behind here is, is that we want to create a nice, nice ambiance of, uh, of energy back here. Um, the, you know, green on green is, can be very tiring, very boring. So what I wanted to do here is to make sure that I've got something that's a little bit more interesting uh, while we do this. So I'm, I'm going to dump in a couple of real heavy darks while this is drying. And I'm going to do that via, and what I'm doing is actually coming in here and picking up some of my French ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna. Okay, so here's my French ultramarine blue here. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna, bring it into this, and I'm going to make some darks. Um, I'm going to splatter some of this. But you know what? What I'm doing here, i got to just be careful about this. This is why I don't want it. Just hit that that way. Run Sienna. Maybe a little bit of a touch there. Certainly a little bit of stuff down in this area here. Maybe just a little bit of touch in here. So we're just basically bringing in into my wet area. So what I'm doing is I'm creating or characteristic shapes of some of the dark areas behind here. There's some darker foliage that's in, you know, in and around the leg area here. And some darker stuff that's happening in here. And I'm just so hoping that we can take some of this out. A lot, lot of water up here. Add some more green. Let's get some more of that New Gamboge mixture in here. And we're just touching and, and letting go. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm varying my green, as you can see. And again, you know, some of it's leaking into the a dry area, but the pool will deal with it. The idea is, is that it's all characteristic shapes that we want to get into here. Um, some darker still. Creating the background. We got some nice darks going on in here. Remember, this is, we're not talking about drawing this now, we're talking about painting it. So, um, you know, I'm not too concerned over that. Doing the, doing the actual structure, we probably should do one of those at some point just to, just to get us used to drawing and no matter what we do when we draw it, um, you know it'll. It's, I mean, it's going to be drawn freehand, so you're not going to. You know, you're not going to have a mechanical. You know, I mean, it's not going to look exactly like your photograph. But so what I'm really doing here is I'm showing you the deer, right? I'm showing you that fawn, that deer, but I'm showing it to you. But in back as, as a silhouette, as a white silhouette. Against against the background, and yeah, you're right. Some of it is actually uh, some of this greens leaking into the or bleeding into the uh, area of the of the font itself. But that's okay. I mean, it's a painting. You know, we just keep putting things in and we want it to create we want interest. I want this as a vignette, so I'm gonna leave a lot of this all, all white. Um, generally speaking, what ends up happening is if it's a good vignette, we have a uh, in terms of actually the logical aspect of a vignette, of what, what its, its definition is, is it should touch all four edges. All right, so we may want to come down here a little bit in in my grass and do that, and maybe we want to come out here a little bit more. Um, nice and loose and we're going to end up probably coming right off the top of the page here maybe we're going to move it over a bit Have a nice light area. Not worry too much about this over here right now. We'll just we'll just let that go. Trying too much for a vignette, a perfect vignette, but forget it. 
let's lift this up. All right, anyway. So you can see what's going on right now, all right? So we're gonna end up letting that dry because if I have to get in here and start to paint the deer, uh, the, the baby fawn here, and we're gonna paint it with a little bit of a nice rust here. See this? We're gonna start off with um, a little bit of a yellow ochre in the fawn, in the, in the body of the fawn. Now, th this happened to be, this is a New England, the, this is a deer up here in the New England market, so this is a spotted, looks like a spotted deer. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but it does have some spots in it, or on it. And we can paint this again, wet, loose. Um, As an example, take this area right here, for instance. This is this is going to be. I'm going to paint this nice and loose and wet. We have a. This is going to be truly a wet into wet watercolor. Alright, so this is all going to be we'll wet all of this area first. Come in with a little bit of ochre. And add a little bit of ochre and a little bit of red with it. cadmium orange in that too. But a little bit of ochre. Um, slightly on the gray side. Maybe we can use actually use the green to our advantage here. So we'll get a little bit of like cobalt blue in here too. Just a touch. I'm going to turn it a bit in the greenish side because the blue and the yellow is going to turn green, right? I want it slightly in the gray side, actually, but that's okay. That'll work. And let's come down in this area here. Now, we've got two legs down here, but we'll start off with... Um, I'm going to start off with one of them. I'm going to make, before I, hit, hit, let's go, let's do this. I added just a touch of red um, in there and, and I just add a touch of red in here. Now, by red, I'm talking about my pyro. What I did is I just took a little bit of pyro red here. Let me just show you what I did. Took a little bit of pyro red and put it in with my yellow ochre so that I had but I had a little bit more of a reddish reddish tone as we came around. Um, and that, that fur. And I'm going to let this bleed. I want to add some of that up in this area here. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing with this. Now we're going to try to paint around. I'm going to leave. <laughs> this is interesting. I'm going to particularly right now leave. Uh, try to leave some uh, number of white spots that are that are um, suggestive. Now I know some of this is going to bleed in the back, so I'm not worried about it though because it's wet into wet. We're 
but we need to leave some white. So we got a little bit of ochre, a little, little bit of my Pyro Red. So it's, we're gonna now coming in here. This is I'm painting this. I have a wet brush now. I and this this is a dry piece of paper, obviously right now. But as I, if I my if my brush is going to be wet, it's going to give me a washier feel than a dry brush or a damp brush. So I should be able to just come in here. When we're trying to do this as a controlled painting. Water. Now I'm not going to get into a situation where I'm, gonna, I'm counting those white spots and saying, well, you know, the deer really has a... 45 white spots on it, so I got to do 45 white spots. That's not the point. Point is, that you want to you want to create the illusion, the characteristic shape of the of the the, the fawn that we're working with here, and um, the suggestion of it being a spotted deer. And some of it is going to be look. Some of it is going to be. Some of this area is going to be darker, browner, redder, warmer. I keep going back to certain things. Um, this is still wet. Building this up a nice little bit of a little bit at a time. Now the reason I'm doing this is because it, you don't need to necessarily mask. That's that's the big fallacy. You know, we can sort of work over. If we have a thinner brush or or a brush with a nice decent point, even if it's a fat brush, we can work ourselves and work our way around to leave some of the white. Um, now we're going to come over here and actually come in and get a little bit more of a cooler. I'm going to do a cooler yellow. So I'm going to take my Naples yellow in here and come down. Add a little bit of Naples yellow here and there. And then just cold, and then just, I'm sorry, then just yellow ochre. We want to create the illusion, remember. Oh, this nice little guy. And we have cartilage and bone structure here. Some of it's going to be lighter, so we're going to leave it lighter. going underneath. So let's get a little bit of, touch a little bit of cobalt blue in here for the, for, for the shadow area over here and underneath.
and we'll blend this with a little bit of my reddish value, reddish color. As you come down here, and we're dealing with water. Now, that, notice this, this whole thing, I haven't got, none of this has been painted with really heavy pigment yet. This is a little bit of a different pr approach, I suppose. Because we want to leave some of this white, or light, I should say. So let's get go back and get that little bit of red again. And a little bit of cobalt blue. I'm sorry, a little bit of my yellow ochre. And again, getting that in there, getting it a little bit darker there. Some dark areas. going to build this up okay so we're going to have to wait just a hair just a bit on this because I don't want to put wet into wet so much anymore. Now I'm going to start to do do my my area where I'm going to start to do more more of a drier, more of a controlled, darker area. Uh, A little cobalt. In the end of belly. Okay, so we're gonna have to let that I'm gonna to have to let that set up a bit more because it's very wet, and uh, I, w I don't mind painting. For instance, pigment-wise, if we get a little bit of more of a dry brush, I just took the water out of the brush here. Start to get this thing. Let's get more pigment. Yeah, I'll give you an example. Let's just get this thing. If I put, say, I want to make this a little dark, it's a little bit too red. So now what I'm doing is I'm mixing up my pigment. Mixing up my pigment, not wet, but dry. See this? Probably the consistency of butter. Okay. So I want to be able to come in here, <coughs> excuse me, and hit some hit some dry that's dry spots dry paint now this is wet up here but it's still going to spread but it's okay the 
just a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of blue to this, make it browner. And in certain areas, for instance, a little shadow under here. Maybe in the hip area over here. Um, a little bit of bone there, a little bit of... Something here. We have this guy in here. A little darker over there. Again, we're still a little bit on the wet side, so we need to wait a bit. And then we'll start to define. <clears throat> we'll start to define a little bit more of the uh, structure of the animal. Um, well, in the meantime, <clears throat> in the meantime, excuse me. Let's see if we can create. Uh, some darks in here that are indicative of um, some of the floral stuff that's going on. I lost them. You can see what happens is that we ended up uh, with all of this, all this very loose stuff, very watery. Uh, we actually lost our ability to maintain those shapes. Now I'm really not following, when I'm doing this, I'm not following a pattern. So I'm not looking at that, that sort of that photograph and I'm not saying, well, there's a leaf here, or there's a leaf there, or whatever. I mean, you know, we, we've got to have some structure, obviously. But, um, We want to create the, the illusion, it looks like, that there are, there's a leafy structure here. Okay, that's a little bit too wet. This should be okay over here. We should be able to do... S A little bit more. Okay. Let's do this. have to wait because all of that's pretty wet. So what we're doing is just playing around here, just actually doing the background a little bit. A little bit of... A little bit of dry brush. Create some of these. Um, I think we'll just let it set for a while and I'll come back. So we're going to take about uh, maybe maybe 10 minutes and then I'll be back. Okay, it's still damp and uh, but I just wanted to wait a bit. Not quite 10 minutes, but we'll just do this. Um,
just trying to trying to create um just some interesting interesting things that are happening back here maybe some flowers on the who knows on the vine I don't know Dark area. Okay. So let's let's try to get into in a little bit more of a some detail here. Um. See what we can do with a little small brush. Uh, I want to create a little bit of a lighter feel here, so get some tissue. little bit of water pull out some of that there highlight Let's get a little bit of my dark we on that nose. dark on that nose. And we'll take a little bit of water. And just soften this up a little bit here and here. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the eye. Okay, the eyes are right here. And right there. careful because I don't want to get this thing too big. Okay. Now we have a little bit of a, a little bit of an 
area over here that's going to be nice, slight brown, slight, a little bit of mixture of my yellow ochre and burnt sienna. A little bit of yellow ochre and burnt sienna. We're going to create this little, this area in here that's a little bit of underneath the air. I mean, this is all. Take a little bit of this in here too. Okay, in the same way with coming in here, you have inside the ear, inside the ear. to get a little bit of blue we got a little bit of shadowed area here let's see right in this area here at the crown. And I'm going to lighten this up a bit. Okay. is very slight. There's a very slight shadow over here. Okay, so I'm a little darker here. A 
Exactly there. We have the uh, dark holes down in this area here. Some darks down in here. This is just now a matter of bringing it, bringing it around to its, I'm going to make this dock in here. Against this light. Okay. Let's get this ear popped up over here a little bit more. I think we need to
Well, 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 well. Well, I think that uh, that's close. It's close to where we want to be. I, what I might want to do is just to put a little bit of a, a real fine, some fine lines in there. Uh, but we have to let it dry first. Is it, this is a color pencil. Um, watercolor pencil. It, 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 so that you understand that this is I don't know if I can do anything with this because this is still wet but I'm just trying to create fur probably can't do it because it's all wet and I think we're close to being finished Now, now we're going to let it go. Let it go for now. Let it dry out. Not much I can do with that right now at all. Um, let me just also just do one other thing here. See if I can drag. With this with my rigger. Create some thin hair like structure. Fur, not hair, I guess. Need a little bit of darker area in here. I can see inside the ears. And then we have a real nice something that's dark that's there. Dark that's there. Dark that's there. Create a little bit of a fur, fur structure or hair on the on the animal. We don't want too much.
A little bit, not much. Just gonna come in here and outline this head a little bit more because it's getting lost, I think. I think that's it. I think we'll call it a painting. I uh, appreciate you being with me. I'm your host, Tony Visco. This is another one of those Painting for Pleasure programs. Until the next time, let's have fun painting. Take care. Bye-bye.